Today, I want to explain how Michael Burry suggests that you should invest for 2023. Now, we know that both Jim Cramer and Michael Burry have opposite opinions of the current market. One suggests that it's a new bull market and the other a bear market rally. But who's right? Which direction is the current market heading? How do we know that? And how can we maximize our profits as a result? Well, stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So Michael Burry tweeted today saying this time is different, basically hinting that the current market is simply a bear market rally and further crashing should be expected. This chart shows the S&P 500 from 2000 to 2002. During that time, we experienced a large bear market rally, which was then followed by another 28% decline. So right off the bat, Michael Burry is saying that you should not be buying the S&P 500 or stocks in general, and if anything, you should be shorting the wider market. But on the flip side, we have Jim Cramer tweeting that he reiterates that it is 100% a new bull market. Although this is indeed a very interesting tweet because just yesterday Jim Cramer said a recession was guaranteed to happen no matter what. Yesterday Jim Cramer said the market is already decided and the Federal Reserve will create a recession no matter what. So how can we see the start of a new bull market and a new bull run if there's a recession that's guaranteed to be coming over the next few months? Surely if there's a recession isn't the market just about to fall further and not start a new bull run? Jim Cramer even tweeted saying it does not take too long for this market to go negative. He said it's already re-digested Friday's news and decided that the Fed will tighten and create a recession no matter what. So if the Fed is going to continue tightening and cause a recession, what is that going to look like and how is that going to play out? Well, Kanto tweeted saying markets have rallied at the end of every Fed tightening cycle, regardless of a recession or not. He said it always looks like a soft landing, which is why the market always prices it in. He said the Nasdaq rallied 40% in the mid 2000s during the pivot window, which is what Michael Burry was tweeting about earlier on. Right here we saw this rally in the early 2000s which was about a 40% rally before hitting this pretty much double top and then falling further as the Fed started cutting rates. The Fed obviously cut rates into the recession to stimulate growth which obviously crashed the market further as they had fully admitted the event of recession. And that is exactly what Michael Burry said is going to happen over the next few months. The Fed will slow down their rate hikes before plateauing on the interest rate for a little while before then cutting rates into the recession. They may even have to continue tightening and continue raising rates if inflation gets too out of control and in that event a recession will be twice as bad. Now you may be saying, Tom, if this is the case, what's caused the current bear market rally over the last month of January? Well, Al tweeted saying a bear market rally starts by squeezing out the shorts. So I guess the first answer we need to know is have the shorts yet been squeezed? Well, as Chris tweeted, Goldman Sachs reported that Thursday saw the single heaviest day of short covering activity by hedge fund clients in a decade. So therefore, yes indeed, we have seen these shorts being squeezed. Have the shorts completely been squeezed out and is this bear market rally finished right now? I can't say for sure, but it does indeed seem that the shorts have been squeezed. We can tell the shorts are being squeezed A because of the Goldman Sachs report and B because the current rally has been driven by these stocks that are practically bankrupt. It's been driven by Carvana, Coinbase, Bed Bath & Beyond and many other heavily shorted names that have either currently entered bankruptcy proceedings or are about to announce. Now I'll follow it up by saying that it extends through some narrative that seems to validate the current price action, but in the end though, to morph into a new bull market, it needs fundamentals and or the Fed, and you have neither in 2023. What Alf is suggesting here is you can't just have a technical breakout of a downward trending line by many bankrupt stocks. You need a fundamental change in the current economy that justifies a new bull market. You need a recession and the ending of that recession to start off the next bull market, not entering a new recession while there's a small technical breakout on a bear market rally. Also guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell as it would really help me out. And Goldman Sachs is also saying that the stock market rally is about to crumble and investors should expect zero upside for equities through to the end of the year. Goldman Sachs has said the S&P 500 has more downside than upside between now and the end of the year due to high valuations and weak earnings growth. And as a result, Goldman Sachs is growing more and more skeptical of the impressive year-to-date rally. 
Now, I think this is really, really important. As more and more major institutions continue getting more and more skeptical, it basically means they're going to continue sidelining more and more cash. As more and more cash sits on the sidelines, that basically means that when the market does turn around and begin crashing, these major institutions can go all in on a market crash. That'll obviously push the market down further and faster because there's going to be all of this money flooding into the market on the short side all at once. Goldman is saying that a soft landing and above trend growth is already priced into US stocks. And even if a soft landing does indeed come to fruition, such an outcome should not lead to substantial equity market upside. Basically saying that a soft landing is already priced in. And if the Fed does achieve a soft landing, the stock market doesn't go anywhere. But if the Fed doesn't achieve this soft landing and a recession does begin, look out below. And on top of Goldman Sachs, you've also got Bank of America issuing an update. Bank of America's Hartnett warns investors of the risk of sleepwalking into a sell-off. Bank of America is also saying the US stock rally has already gone too far, and investors face brutal declines if economic growth crumbles in the second half of the year. They've said the most painful trade is always the apocalypse postponed trade. They've said the risk is that inflation flares up again over the next few months. And as a result, that would mean the US economy faces a deeper recession in the second half of 2023. And in terms of a catalyst that's going to curb that economic growth, we have this comment from the Fed's Bostic. Fed's Bostic is saying a higher peak rate is on the table after the jobs blowout. The Atlanta Fed chief says its main job is controlling inflation. We also know that Jerome Powell reiterated today that he's not aiming for a 3 or 4% inflation rate, he's dead set on that 2% rate. And therefore, Bostic is telling Bloomberg that the Fed may have more work to do and may need to increase the number of rate hikes. The market is already priced in just simply two more hikes, so if we do have a third or a fourth hike on the table, that's again going to crush the market even further. And Dominique, an ex-employee at the Fed, the IMF and Bridgewater has said if you're betting on rate cuts, prepare for pain. She's argued the Fed has a lot more to go and could hike to 7 or even 8%. And that is obviously massively, massively worrying because the current market has only priced in a terminal rate of between 5 and 5.5%. 5 .5%. If the Fed does continue hiking to 7 or 8% terminal rate, the market would go nuts. As a result, the Fed is basically saying your best case scenario, which is happening right now, is the market stays exactly where it is. But if anything slight, even minuscule goes wrong, look out below because we're guaranteed to have a recession. And finally, as Oculus Trade tweeted, obviously with some sarcasm, he said everything is perfectly fine in the S&P 500. He tweeted this photo, which is the common separate cycles in the stock market. Many people believe that right now we're currently in this despair section and we're about to return to the mean and set new all-time highs in the S&P 500. But what Oculus Trade is suggesting is that we've experienced denial, we've experienced this suggested bull trap, and we're about to return to normal before a massive crash back down. Oculus Trade is expecting the S&P 500 to fall below 225 points, or 2,250. He expects we're going to continue seeing the S&P 500 falling below the 2020 pandemic lows. Now again, that's obviously in line with Michael Burry's suggestion that the worst has not yet been felt. Michael Burry is ultimately saying that right now is not the time to invest in the S&P 500. If anything, we should be shorting. I think right at this very moment here today, it's hard to say exactly which direction we should trade in the S&P 500. Should we go long or should we short? The CNBC Fear and Greed Index is suggesting that right now we're at peak greed and the market is just about to turn around. I think right now I'll be paying close attention to this fear and greed index and seeing which way it moves in relation to the current market. If we see the S&P 500 beginning to fall and crash and we see this fear and greed index turning towards fear, I believe we're expecting to see the S&P 500 falling much, much further. However, if the greed levels begin to cool off as the S&P 500 runs up higher, we could indeed be in the next bull market. Therefore, I'd be expecting to take a long position over the next couple of weeks, depending on which way the market moves, relevant to the Fear and Greed Index. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.